Hello and welcome back to the Now We Know Show, the show where we discuss a topic of interest and by the end we will have learnt something new and hopefully you will too. I'm Zach. I'm Buzz. And I'm Jack. And this week we have our super duper Platinum Jubilee Special. Woo! Where you're going to learn all about the Royal Family, Mm -hmm. Jubilees, we're going to reminisce over our own experiences, whether we have met or had anything to do with the Royal Family. And uh, let's kick it there off. There we go. Let's kick it off. Should we find out what the Platinum Jubilee is all about? Oh, this is a good question. Yes, let's dive straight in there and let's ask the computer. Computer, what is a Platinum Jubilee? A Platinum Jubilee marks 70 years on the throne. Queen Elizabeth II was the first British monarch to reach this landmark on the 6th of February 2022. And there we go. There go. My simple now, explanation. Now, <laughs> I've found some kind of more generic information about the royal family in this. Okay. Um, what has everyone else kind of found? Well, I'm coming from the perspective of the listeners. I mean, we've got listeners all over the world, you know, and so maybe they don't all know about exactly what a jubilee is. So I've just wanted to list out the Queen's jubilees from her coronation. Uh, so we can just... Okay. Well... I've got a bit of kind of generic information about the royal family, so why don't I go into that? Okay, you kick off then, say. Okay, so who is in the royal family? Queen Elizabeth II has been the UK's head of state since 1952, when her father, King George VI, died. She is also the head of state for 15 other Commonwealth countries. The 96-year-old monarch has four children, eight grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. She was married to her late husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, who died in April 2021 for more than 73 years. Other members of the royal family include the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, who is married to the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla. He is the Queen's eldest child and will become king when she dies. The Duke of Cambridge, Prince William, who is married to the Duchess of Cambridge, Catherine. William is the eldest son of the Prince of Wales, and Diana, Princess of Wales. The Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, is William's brother. He is married to the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan. In 2020, they announced they were stepping back from their senior royals. Yeah, well, I think we all know about that. I think everybody across the world knows about that. Because the British royal family are just world-renowned, aren't they? I don't think there can be anybody in in the world that doesn't know who Queen Elizabeth II is. And uh, as I say, the Platinum Jubilee is on, what, the 2nd of of June. So what exactly is a Jubilee for people that don't? Well, marking the Jubilee, let's go straight to uh, the Queen's coronation. So the Queen came to the throne on February the 6th, 1952, and her coronation took place on the 2nd of June. 1953. So right. uh, that's why the silver, should I say, the platinum jubilee will be celebrated from the 2nd of June this year. She celebrated her silver jubilee in 1977, which marked 25 years on the throne. And I certainly remember that. You guys weren't around back then. No, I don't know. Uh, we, we can come back and discuss that in my memories on that one. And her golden jubilee was in 2002, which marked 50 years on the throne. Uh, and again, we can reminisce over that in a minute because there's some bits there that I, uh, I certainly remember from that jubilee. And uh, for her 50th year on the throne, she visited 70 cities and towns throughout England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland over 38 days from May to August. And people all over the world held street parties, garden parties and other events to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. The Queen and Prince Philip have four children, as Zach's yep. already said. <laughs> with Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, who is her heir apparent to the throne. Oh, I think he said it better than me. (laughs) (laughs) I think, I'm sure I read somewhere that Charles will be the oldest person to ascend to the throne as well. Um, I think he's 76, I want to say. uh, I think the oldest king before that was 69, I think, when he came to the throne. Right, I didn't know that. That's an interesting fact. I I might not, not have got the ages perfectly right, but I know there was something to do with him being... The oldest king to ascend fascinating to the throne which is interesting and that obviously shows how long okay. queen elizabeth has actually so been in one of, the, one of the things i've noticed that because obviously <clears throat> we're here uh, for the listeners if you don't already know we're, we're doing the podcasts uh we're based in england in the uk 
and when I've traveled in the past things come back to me especially a time when I was in the States and uh, it was quite humorous really because I was asked um, if I could go to a local school and basically get interviewed by the school children <laughs> yeah what it was like to as be as as to be <laughs> to be Brit but it's funny because Although a lot of people in the UK refer to themselves as British, mm. when you go abroad, they always say, oh, you, you're English. Yeah. You know, they always say you're English, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, and I dare say if I had a Scottish accent, they'd say Scottish, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, so you've got this kind of all-encompassing British persona from everybody from Great Britain. Or um, everyone's from London. <laughs> or everybody's from London. Um, or, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> the, the the point was though I was going to say was that being interviewed by these school children was was an eye opener because uh, the things that come out straight away is you always get asked have you met the Queen yes <laughs> uh, or have you met any royal family mm -hmm. and uh, which I must admit I've never met Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II and I've neither have I actually met any other royals but I have enjoyed celebrating jubilees over the year. Uh, and one other question interestingly that popped to mind is the children asked me because I was from England when you buy a house in England do the servants come with it <laughs> <laughs> which the child yes. always remember for any American children yes they do yes. now, now you when, get two per house yeah. <laughs> and when you say that I do have ten interesting facts about the royal family that I can bring up at the end of this episode oh that'd be well worth waiting for oh, yeah. forward to that yeah. Yeah. Uh, should I move on to my next point yeah please do yep. please okay do. So, what is the monarchy and how does succession work? Oh, Do you know about that, anyone? Well, no. um, I kind of well, guess succession how succession is... works in terms of kind of family. Yeah, that's, kind that's of the first through, born that's through, male heir goes to That's the through the bloodline, isn't it? Opposed to through marriage. Would that be right? Well, let's, I'm going to read this little let's segment. Let's find out. Okay. In a monarchy, a king or queen, the monarch, is the head of state. In the UK, we have something called a constitutional monarchy... The Queen is the head of state but does not get involved in politics and laws are made by the Houses of Parliament. Mm -hmm. We had the state opening of Parliament the other day, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, but unfortunately, the Queen, although she did go to... Uh, there was an event held at uh, Windsor Castle a couple of days ago and she did attend in a car and she looked in very, very good health. Yeah, I think she had a standing uh, ovation. Yeah, standing ovation. I think she was one of her horses or something won, Ooh, won her award. Was she cool. was really happy. But unfortunately, the Queen at the moment is having some mobility issues. So the Prince of Wales stood in, didn't he, hmm. uh, to do the opening of Parliament. Okay. The order of succession is the line in which members of the royal family stand to take over as the monarch when the existing one dies or abdicates. First in the line... The heir to the throne is the monarch's firstborn. That's obviously yeah, we, yep, that's pretty much obvious. That. Okay. Royal succession is governed by rules dating back hundreds of years. These were amended in 2013 so that royal sons no longer take precedence over their older sisters in the order. Prince Charles is the first in line to the throne. His eldest son, Prince William, is second in line. And William's eldest child, Prince George, is third. Very interesting, Zach. Superb. So uh, it's interesting as well. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that, no, um, please carry on. We've now got kind of a, a, a line of kings now, haven't we? We've, we've yes. had a queen for. Yeah, we've had a queen my for, whole life. Yes, yeah, um, my whole yes. my whole life as yeah. well. Uh, I did ask my mother, bless her. Yes, I said to, to to my mother, for her recollection of when the queen. Uh, came to the throne and was at coronation. And I thought, yeah, I kind of had this um, uh, idea that everybody would be rushed home and they're sitting around the radio, or the, not everybody had televisions, but around the TV if they had them to, to watch the coronation or listen to the coronation. And my mother said, no, I was working at the telephone exchange, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see or hear anything about it at all, <laughs> which was a bit of a downer because I, oh. thought, I thought I'd revel in her memories of, of the uh, coronation. Oh, yeah. That's interesting because that brings me on to my next but, but point. But as Jack was saying, you're quite right because now it's king and then king and yeah. then king. It's kind of weird to think about that. Well, when it, when I mean, obviously we, we don't want to... Uh, because obviously good. they'll change the coins and everything. Well, that's it. We don't want to say goodbye to the Queen at, at all, really. So with the Platinum Jubilee, we're kind of celebrating her time that she spent on the throne. All those years. And that, that is absolutely fantastic. But you're quite right. As time moves on, yeah, all the currency has got to be reprinted, coins changed. Can't imagine who's in charge stamps. of that job. <laughs> everything has got to change uh, for obviously Prince Charles. 
Hmm. Um, and there'll be a kind of slow phasing out of the older money, as there is with the yeah. full currency that hmm. goes through. There'll exactly. be a, there'll be the old stuff. Oh, it's kind of never on. really experienced that, except from the changing of the fibers to, from yes. paper to plastic. To plastic, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, if uh, I don't know if anybody else has plastic money around the world, I assume other people have plastic money, but it's. Not I mean, like... to be honest, most people are going contactless now, so that would yeah. kind of negate the issue. Oh, no. Will there be any cash? <laughs> oh, no. That means, you know, you kind of want to go contactless. And as you pass your, if you're using your phone or mm. you're using your card on a contactless display, I want a picture of the Queen's head to pop up yeah. just to make me know that I'm spending my money. She just gives you a thumbs up and all that. That's week. it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe sort of progressive, depending on how much you've spent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, double thumbs up. ka <laughs> you know. All right. Would you like to know what happens at a coronation? I would yes. love to well, know I've what never... happens at a coronation. I've never seen one, so it'll be interesting. They, yeah. they eat coronation chicken? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because they, they made a new... Uh, a new pudding. A new pudding the other day, new didn't pudding they? pudding has... Because uh, uh, every, every jubilee, they create something new. Okay, so what happens at a coronation? If a monarch dies, the heir to the throne becomes king or queen immediately. Right. The coronation, a glittering ceremony at which the monarch is formally crowned, takes place later following careful planning and after a period of mourning for the previous king or queen. The main elements of the occasion have remained largely unchanged for a millennia. Oh, wow. Or millennium. That is the thing with the royal family. It's all very old customs and traditions Mm. and everything that we still see nowadays. So, yeah, the pageantry, definitely. I mean, did you see the uh, state opening of the... House of Commons the other day. I did see a little bit on the news. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, they had the the lady who is the current Black Rod marching across there and banging on the door for entry. Um, it's uh, it, uh, the the pomp and ceremony is amazing. It's interesting from the perspective of someone. Well, I'm not American, but uh, people from America looking at some of our traditions of the royal family it must be quite sort of weird for them to see some of our old kind of royal traditions. Well, I would imagine it's probably very... I mean, we've all grown up with it, so mm. we probably don't give it too much of a second thought. We just accept it. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Um, but even so, when you're seeing, say, the House of Lords and they've all got their wigs on and their robes, yeah. you know, it is almost like something you'd expect out of a fantasy yeah. film, <laughs> yeah. a movie, because mm. you think modern modern parliaments, you know, as I say, modern within the context of history, you would have people just in their suits, etc. But, you know, the amount of mm. ceremony that was there... It's absolutely fantastic. So back onto the coronation. The coronation is performed by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The monarch is anointed with holy oil, receives the orb and scepter, which are symbols of royalty, and is crowned with the St. Edward's crown, the centrepiece of the crown jewels. Hey! And then we all stand up and salute the Queen. Are you aware of... I know one of us, or maybe two of us. I know one of us is definitely aware of a series called The Crown. Yeah, I was in it. Yeah, that exactly. was in it. <laughs> bingo cards. <laughs> that was in it. Yeah, bingo cards, everybody. Um, there is a good scene in that about the coronation, and you kind of see it all. Obviously, it's dramatised, but you see it all step by step. And mm-hmm. I learnt a lot of things watching that. So, if anyone's interested, don't in the always scene. believe what you see on TV, Jack. Okay. I mean, I've only <laughs> seen the episodes. Aren't I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I saw him on a battleship with uh, <laughs> with uh, what's his name, Matt Smith. Matt Smith. You know, <laughs> it wasn't real. <laughs> well, it was a real battleship, but... I had to play an Australian sailor. There you go. What there, mate? <laughs> Do you think he'll be all right? Do you think he'll be... Yeah, though you didn't get his line. Or... No. Anyway, see, we're already reminiscing about pseudo-royals. <laughs> so where we go from here now, guys, in our celebration would of you the like, Platinum Jubilee? Would you like to know what powers the Queen has? Ooh. Ooh. Is, is <laughs> Do, you like, know? Do you know Is, is, like, is she like a meta-human? Does she have yeah. the force? <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. you'll find out in a second. Okay. Then. Right. Although the United Kingdom is a monarchy, the Queen's power is strictly symbolic and ceremonial, and she is expected to remain politically neutral. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, as, as yes. Uh, citizens of the United Kingdom, we, we all know that, I think. What's the, um, in the House of Parliament, there's like a staff or something on the... Oh, the big scepter. Yeah, the golden it's the scepter. mace. The mace, It's yeah. something to do with the Queen, isn't it? It's yeah. about... That's, that, I think, doesn't that represent her presence in the Houses of Parliament? Yes, something like that. I learned that not that long ago and I found it quite interesting. Okay. Among the powers she has are appointing a government, the leader of the winning party in a general election is invited to Buckingham Palace where the Queen formally invites him or her to form a new government. She will also formally dissolve a government before a general election. Mm -hmm. 
state opening, which you already said about, yes. and the Queen's speech. The Queen starts the parliamentary year with the state opening ceremony, during which she will read out the government's policy ideas and plans in a speech delivered from the throne in the House of Lords. Royal assent, when a piece of legislation is passed through Parliament, it must be formally agreed to by the Queen in order to become law. The last time royal assent was refused was in 1708. Oh, who refused it, do you know? No, I don't <laughs> know. You didn't get that bit. Okay. Well, maybe somebody can comment and let us know without us needing to Google. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, let's just start reminiscing about things. So, okay, I'm going to start simply because I'm the eldest, and mm -hmm. I do remember the Silver Jubilee in 1977. Uh, and to be honest with you, it was it was really quite a big thing. You know, I, I'd I'd say on reflection. For me, the Silver Jubilee has been the biggest Jubilee celebration that all my life, even though we've obviously had the Golden mm. Jubilee as well. Mm. And, uh, I don't know how the Platinum Jubilee is going to go. But back in 1977, I don't think there was a street in the country that was not having street parties. Uh, the, the avenue that I lived on, everybody got together. We had tables all the way down we're in the avenue we had a, a green the, where all the kids used to play and um, all along the road by the edge of the green we had tables out and it was yeah jelly and ice cream and sandwiches and bunting and oh, it was so just much fun. it was yeah, lemonade <laughs> it was uh, it was just a party through the day so into the street into the were street parties were they like a, a regular thing on kind of celebratory events well i, I only remember on the jubilees did mm. we have street parties i think the, um, well, I, i'd assume uh, so the biggest one before that was probably something like ve day uh probably when you see pictures of obviously yeah people in the streets yeah. having mm. parties and everything yeah yeah, yeah. The the i think we recreated that at, when in primary school yeah yeah so uh, so for, for me 1977 Definitely remember the big street parties we had, and at school um, we were all given silver jubilee coins. I, I was given the silver jubilee money box, which I think I've still got in the attic somewhere. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, silver jubilee. That was big. It was big. Uh, and then jumping forward, what two thousand two for the golden jubilee? Mm, I didn't see. Well, where, where we live, I didn't see. Because obviously, I, I was kind of around yeah, at that yeah. point as yeah. well, but I never really kind of so experienced were... any kind of street no. party or major Did, celebrations. We we moved to where we live now, and we've lived there for over thirty years. And I remember speaking to the older neighbours, which sadly have have now passed away. But they again showed us photographs and reminisced over the Silver Jubilee and what everybody did in mm. the Silver, Silver Jubilee. But uh, that wasn't replicated in the Golden Jubilee. It sort of it seemed to have come down a little bit yeah um, but saying that saying that i still wanted to celebrate uh the the uh, golden jubilee and so i turned on the tv and watched it and you guys are still probably too young even for that one at I 2002 probably, i would have probably been about three yeah mm -hmm. so but, I probably wouldn't have but what known. stands out uh, and anybody listening to this you can probably google this uh, have a look on uh, youtube but i do remember um a live broadcast from Buckingham Palace and Brian May from Queen uh, was on top of the palace yeah. and just him and his guitar playing God Save the Queen. <laughs> and it was amazing. That sounds awesome. It, it, it was, awesome. was really rocking this God Save the Queen. You know? <laughs> and uh, and every, all the crowds just outside the, the palace went absolutely crazy. Uh, and I could just imagine everybody that watched that across the country must have just... just thought it was amazing. Oh, I can't really think they'd get away yeah. with that nowadays. <laughs> I don't know. The security and everything. I wonder oh. if there was a... I can't really say I've really experienced any kind of that kind of hooray celebratory kind of experience. Oh, oh well. Um, I know, well, okay, let's let's go because obviously that's my experience of the Jubilees so far and obviously here we are uh, celebrating the, the uh, Platinum Jubilee. Um, but what experiences have you had when it comes to royalty? Well, um... I wouldn't say it's really much of an experience, but the closest I had come to an experience of meeting royalty was when I was in lower school mm -hmm. um, and the Queen came to visit. Oh, I think I recall that. She came to, she came to the, the station. Station, Because yeah. in our village we have a station and mm. she came to visit the station, so she would... Yeah, but at the train station, uh, I think 
we asked permission for me to yeah, I don't remember have the, the day off or something the, to go and visit the Queen at the yeah, to see train the station. Queen at the train station because it's once in a lifetime experience, but they wouldn't let they you. wouldn't let me. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Boo. That's not the first time, though, because there was another time where, where it was a, a kind of once-in-a-lifetime experience you've just reminded me of. Oh, yeah? And uh, nothing to do with the Jubilee, but we had a glorious uh, eclipse. I think it was literally an almost total eclipse of the sun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was so excited being an amateur astronomer. Oh. I, I, you know, and they, there was this opportunity, and the, and the weather was perfect. And I remember standing in the orchard, mm -hmm. With I have a special sun lens that I can look through, but there it was. And unfortunately, Zach was at school. Well, you would have been obviously as well, Jack. Yes, yeah. And I wanted you guys to have experienced that as yeah. well. But I remember experiencing it in the orchard and watching that eclipse occur. And then suddenly, what stands out to me is the amazing temperature drop. Suddenly, that like that, somebody turned the heating on the planet <laughs> off. And and I was so and I, I couldn't wait to, for when you got home to have a talk about it. Talk about how did you get on? And and I missed it. And why is that? <laughs> because of my English teacher. <laughs> she wouldn't let us go outside to see it like, during that. lesson. During lesson, she said, "Well, you had to wait." I had to wait till the end of the lesson to go outside see, and see, see it. The total, oh, it's going to wait for you. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's you, what you I thought. It was it, the it, it was just the thinking behind it. It was like and they were then yeah they were everyone yeah. in the class was thinking about. Let's just go. Let's, Let's just, just go. drop and go because I'm not going to might not get to see this again. Finally, ran out at the end of the lesson. Everyone's coming back in. Yeah. It already happened like yeah, 10, I, 15 I minutes ago. Other people had seen it. Yeah, everyone else yeah. in school. I just our class. I was one of them. What was your English teacher's name? Do you remember? Am I supposed <laughs> to say that? Yes, you can say that for prosperity. Uh, Miss Clark. Thank you, Miss Clark. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Clark. Well, I think it was Miss Clark. Well, anyway, you're anyway. not gonna, you're not going to miss out on the wonderful celebrations <laughs> for the. Uh, Platinum Jubilee, though. All right. What about you, Jack? I was about six or seven, I would say, last year of lower school. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the last year of lower school. Um, and are you aware of the Stockfold Mill? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a lovely place. Yes. Uh, the village I live, uh, there is a mill in Stockfold. Yeah. And Prince Philip was visiting to, I think, open or... Yeah, it had a lot of restoration work on yes, it, didn't it? Yes, open the restoration. Um, and we were all dragged out during the school day. In the pouring rain. <laughs> Bless. A whole class. Well, um, we do live in England. At least that was exciting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we stood on the uh, stood on the pathway waiting for Prince Philip to come for probably an hour. The pouring rain. <laughs> and he literally went past in his car, waved out the window, and that was it. He went around the corner. <laughs> um, and I turned and looked to my head teacher and I went, is that it? And yeah, that was it. And we went back inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I just saw his, a glimpse of Prince Philip as he waved and that was it. And then... Oh, yes. Well, it's left you with a memory. Yeah. Uh, and there's a smile and on your face. And now I can tell it on a podcast. And <laughs> you can tell it to the whole world. Oh. Um, uh, any other family members or anything you can think of? I remember at the same school, um, Prince Andrew, who's in a bit of pickle at the moment. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, he landed in a helicopter yep. on a field just outside my school. And we all spent the day making Union Jack flags and oh, waving them. I as never got in. to do any of that stuff. Right, yeah. That was probably the the two standout ones. Um, I think my sister was at school when the Queen visited Samuel Whitbread. Uh, I think she was there at the time, and I think she saw her briefly. But other than that, I've never. Right. Been in the I close, know that my quarters with my my, gra my grandfather, who uh, was a police sergeant. I know that my grandfather and grandmother went. They were invited to the. Uh, Queen's tea party at Buckingham Palace, so mm -hmm. so they did go, and I've got the official letter still from the palace inviting them to the wow. tea party, and uh, I think there's a couple of paper cuttings as well. Um, so I, I know my grandparents got to meet <laughs> the Queen. Nice. I have one more point of information. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Because we're, we're here to learn about stuff. So what else does the royal family do? The Queen and other senior royals carry out official engagements. Family members also represent her in visits to other countries. Many are patrons of charities and some have established their own, such as the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme for Young People, founded by Prince Philip. They have close ties to the armed forces. Prince William served in the Royal Air Force and Prince Harry served in the army. Mm. Well, 
Talking about that, I, uh, the, the, the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme has been very popular over the years. Mm, yes. Uh, I, I never got the opportunity to do it when I was at school. I know you did, Zach. I did, yes. You got your bronze. I got my bronze. That. Did you get a chance to do that? Um, I probably wasn't the sort of kid that would do the Duke of Edinburgh <laughs> award at that time, but oh, yeah, yeah. I'm aware of when it happened. Yeah. From, <laughs> from, God, God gets you out in the woods to get your from, hands to it. From that experience, all I remember is being plonked in a group and they were just complaining about all the walking. Yeah. Well, you're an outside kind of guy. I'm the outside kind of person. I had to carry their backpacks for them. You know, you, 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 you. And somebody else was in charge of the map, so we got lost. Interesting, there's a little crossover here. You mentioned about Prince Philip coming to open the mill, and for the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, mm. you volunteered at the mill. Oh, yeah. So there you go, there's a little connection there. Wow. Yeah, who would have known? <laughs> have you got anything to do with the Stockfold Mill? Uh, I... Don't think I have. Oh. I've cycled past it a few times. <laughs> yeah, cycled past it a few times. I think there might. I think there might be a private res. Is there a private residence underneath? Possibly. Ooh, yeah. Possibly. Okay. I, I might have done some work for somebody who lived at the mill. Um, but there we go. There you go. <laughs> that was many, many years ago. So you know, this, the mill is obviously the the centre point around yes. here that dr- pulls people <laughs> in. You know. Okay, Zach, earlier on you mentioned about 10 interesting facts about the royal family. Would you like to know them now? I think I, would you like to hear about this, Jake? Uh, yes, I've been yeah. looking forward to this. I'm, okay. sure, I'm sure everybody okay. wants to hear about these 10 interesting facts. Okay. See, there's something we don't know. Okay, number one. Yep. The Queen has two birthdays. Yep, we know We know that. In... Yes. I'm going to read about it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, just in case somebody oh, else Oh, yeah, well, know. there's people around the world who might not realise that mm. the Queen has two birthdays. Of course, even monarchs can only be born once. But that doesn't stop the Queen from celebrating two birthdays. She prefers to spend time with family members on her real birthday, the 21st of April. Her official, not actual, birthday, which can vary throughout the Commonwealth, is usually on the second Monday of June and marked by parades in the capital. Oh, there you go. The reasons for Her Majesty's two birthdays, the good old British weather. (laughs) <laughs> is that really? In... Now, now that was something I didn't know. I, I mean, we all knew that the, living in the UK yeah. uh, that the Queen has two birthdays: her official birthday mm-hmm. and her state birthday. But you're telling me the reason for that is simply because of our lovely weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so in 17, 17- I was born in March. Can I have a second birthday? <laughs> uh, in 1748, King George II, who was born in October, decided to combine the annual summer military march. With his own birthday celebrations, since then, every monarch has followed suit. And that was from which year? 1748. So from 1748, suddenly every monarch got two, two birthdays. birthdays. Oh, lucky people. There you go. Didn't know right. that. Okay, and that's fact number one. <laughs> that's fact number one. Come on, let's go on to fact number two. Okie dokie. You're not supposed to touch them. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I do believe uh, so a few years ago, I think the Queen was on an official visit to Australia. And that was when it was very big in the news that the Australian Prime Minister at the time grabbed her arm. I think she came off a plane and he sort of went went to escort her. And it was like, it was a big faux pas. You know, you don't I remember, um, was it Trump's visit to England as well? When he walked in front of her in the... uh, Oh, yeah. He kind of kept walking in front of her. It was quite a bit awkward to watch, but... Yeah, okay. I think, she, I think she wasn't too impressed with no. that. Okay, fact number. Well, I haven't read about oh, it. Oh, yeah, I've finished it. Sorry. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, it's exciting. It's exciting. Right. It's long been a rule that nobody but a royal should physically touch a member of the royal family, especially the monarch. That rule, though, is often ignored nowadays. Michelle Obama famously hugged the Queen at Buckingham Palace in 2009. That's supposed to be a big no-no, but the Queen seemingly embraced it. Some even say she initiated it. Yeah, I, I think overall there has definitely, I've noticed over the years, that the royal family have I, I, I eased up, might be the wrong way to put it, but certainly some of the uh, rules and regulations, if you like, of, uh, that surround the royal family, they've become far more flexible, and that's made them more... Um, Touchable. Well, <laughs> touchable, yeah. I don't know, they, m- 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 less, less aloof and more connectable with, yeah. the, with the general public, yeah. Mm. Um, especially like now, if you look at the young royals, like well, William and Kate, yeah, they are really, you know. Yeah, they they do kind of try and appear to be kind of the most normal-ish family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that number was, three. Uh, number three. Now on number three. Yes, number three. You can't get to the throne by marrying one. Right, so yes, you have to, uh, it has to be the bloodline, doesn't it? Mm. There's... I thought it was interesting, sorry, I thought it was interesting, it came up about Camilla, wasn't it? Camilla's going to be the first to be, is she actually going to be queen while Charles is king? 
I think she will be queen. Yeah. Then. Well, anyway, this is the... <laughs> we shall find out. <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is what I found. Um, right. Uh, there's no point in planning to marry a royal hoping you can mastermind a plot to take the throne. Nobody who marries into royalty can ever ascend to the top. If you married a monarch, your title would either be queen or king cons consort. Consort, yeah. There you go. Okay, so that's fact number... Four. Four. The queen sets the tone at dinners. And what does that mean exactly? Is this a musical <laughs> yeah. tone or subject? I think, I, do I, I think I might know what you mean. Is it something to do with um, knives and forks? I'm going to read. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm one. intrigued. <laughs> okay. We are learning. Uh, eating with kings and queens can seem like a bit of a race to guests, only because as soon as the monarch stops eating, everyone must put down their knives and forks. Of course, royal dinners are pretty lavish, but if you don't want anything going to waste, you'd better keep up. Uh, oh right! So actually, they eat yeah. and as soon as they go. Well, I've had enough. Everyone else has. If you've been, yeah. if you've been gabbing there, the other end of the table, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you've already touched That's your got, spuds, then, then your roast you've, is you've, gone. You've lost it, mate. It's, it, the um, royal family Christmas dinner is supposed to be like the biggest kind of lavish meal, isn't it? For... Oh, what their own private? Yeah, Christmas the Christmas dinner. dinner yeah, mm. I think they have to. I watched a film called Spencer, which was about Lady Diana, um, Princess Diana, actually. And um, they had a they had a weight like scales in the doorway, so when a royal family member would walk in, they would weigh themselves <laughs> on Christmas Eve, and then they'd weigh themselves again on Boxing Day to make sure that they put on enough. I think they have to put on like two pounds or something. Is that kind of like a, a, a family game? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a little tradition which I didn't know about. But huh. okay. Kind of interesting. Number five. Number five. Okay. They do make their own money. Many people believe the royals only have money thanks to the taxpayer but they actually have numerous sources of income. The primary income is derived from the Duchy of Lancaster, a portfolio of residential, agricultural and commercial properties. And then, of course, plenty of people visit London to see the royal abode, such as Kensington Palace and Clarence House. There you go. There you go. So tourism. That, tourism, yeah. Anything to say about that? <laughs> no, that's just interesting to know that they also support themselves from their own income. Number six. Number six. The Queen doesn't need a passport. Okay. Spoilers, that's one of my quiz questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to skip that question in your Oh, no, there's only two, two more. So I've got two oh, questions uh, for my quiz. Well, we can, Jack's got a quiz coming. We can, we can act as if we don't know. Yeah, yeah, just yeah listeners, <laughs> listeners, you didn't hear that. Uh, right. Despite being a little-known fact, it makes sense that when you think about it, all UK passports are issued in Her Majesty's name. Why would Her Majesty need permission from herself to go abroad? The Queen is one of the only people in the world that requires no passport for international travel. Mm. They are. I suppose if she gets stopped, she can just show them a stamp or something. Say, look, look <laughs> yeah. it's me. It's me. ID. Coin. Got any loose change? No, there I am. Uh, uh, number right. seven. Number seven. We're getting there. They can't play Monopoly. Eh? Or should I say, I'm terribly sorry, sir. What did you say? <laughs> it may sound bizarre, but royal family members aren't supposed to play Monopoly. It seems that, like the rest of us, not even the royal f royalty is immune from the inevitable rifts and infighting. <laughs> but in 2008, the Duke of York revealed that apparently the traditional Christmas game gets a bit too vicious oh, in the mm. Mount Batten Windsor household. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hotel. <laughs> Go to jail. That's it. You landed on Mayfair. You, you owe me seven thousand pounds. <laughs> board goes flying. That's why they play, play with actual money. <laughs> Go to jail, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out of jail free card. Yes, or we'll just pay him lots of money. <laughs> you oh, done? We're we'll being we'll be, we'll be slightly over topical there. Number eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of them are buried in Westminster Abbey. What, the royal family? Yeah. You mean the ones that passed away? Yeah. <laughs> so they just crawl out every now and again. Don't say that. Yeah. We've had the zombie episode. Co coronations, weddings, and indeed royal funerals have taken place at West Westminster Abbey. 17 British monarchs are buried within the grounds, the first being King Edward in the 13th century. Pay your respects by visiting the royal tombs on a tour of the abbey. Ah, righty hey. So I presume that's where our great queen will be laid to rest one day. I've been to Westminster Abbey when I was a bit younger. Oh, very, yes, very grand. <laughs> very grand. 
That was number eight. Number eight. Okay. So. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. nine. <laughs> Two more facts to go. Uh, the queen invented a breed of dog. Ooh, I corgis. Think I, I heard about this. Yeah. No, she's got corgis. Right. So it must be a type of corgi. The queen famously loves corgis, yes. and when one of hers mated with a dash hound, <laughs> she created a new mixed breed dorgy species of dog. Dorgy. Dorgy? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's called? Thanks, a dorgy? Thanks to their... Oh, lo- yeah, so it's a dash out of the corgi. It's a dorgy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to their loyalty, intelligence, and friendliness, almost all dorgies are... Jeez, I've never heard of a dorgy. It's like someone saying doggy, but in a different, <laughs> different accent. Dorgy. <laughs> dorgy. Maybe if we have uh, to say it uh, in our most posh voice. Are said to be... Dorgy. A, uh, <laughs> we have a very nice dorgy. <laughs> Can I uh, stroke your dorgy? <laughs> Can I, finish, doggy bite. can I finish the sentence, please? <laughs> <laughs> Almost all doggies are said to be as adorable and loving as they are cute. Adorable. Yes, it's adorable doggy. <laughs> An adorable doggy. You have such a lovely doggy. It's so wonderful. <laughs> it's so doggy. cute and intelligent. Yes, adorable doggy. Yes. I've never heard of a doggy. No. I've heard of a cockapoo, but not a doggy. <laughs> it's a doggy. It's a doggy. There you go, you learned something well, new. Yeah, I have learned something new. Okay. Right. Final point. I wonder how much a doggy costs. <laughs> You don't Not know, sure do from you? the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's only the Queen that owns the doggies. Anyway, number Maybe. 10. Number 10. Number 10. Right. Number 10. Final, Final fact. fact. They own a lot of property. I think there's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> a lot of so, property. Oh, oh, I see. This is a lot. lot. It's, uh, in it's, capital, it's in letters, capital letters. Right, underlined. Yeah. Okay. Right. The holdings of the Crown Estate are worth esti- an estimated £14 billion. Pounds. <laughs> 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 £14 billion. £14 billion. <laughs> billion. <laughs> and extend all over the UK into all sorts of niches, including royal palaces, Farming and agriculture, forestry and parkland, commercial and residential minerals, including gold and silver. I must say that I've been to the Royal Sandringham Estate several times. That's where we held the World Championships for the sport of English country backswording. And that was allowed uh, by royal patronage. I mean, the Queen herself, because of the big show that we were at, was allowed by giving the Queen that gave her permission for that show. So I kind of feel as if... Royalty allowed allowed mm. us to hold yes. the, the world finals there for the back sorting. And that was on the Sandringham Estate. And that is a beautiful estate if you've ever been there yeah. up in Norfolk. It's gorgeous. Mm. And, uh, and they've got £14 billion pounds <laughs> worth of estates like that all over the UK. Plus. Oh, there's more. Plus. Bonus fact. Bonus fact. <laughs> much, much more. They, <laughs> <laughs> much, much more. They also hold the rights to race courses such as the Royal Ascot and even shopping centres. They own shopping centres? Apparently. Oh, right. I didn't I know that. it drips down, doesn't it, into more... Everywhere. Uh, yeah. There oh. you go. That's, that's uh, all I have. That's, your, that's, that's your, me done. That's you done. So I think it's time that we start to think about rounding off this celebratory platinum special by yes. going over to Jack. Yes. Uh, what have you got to tempt us with, Jack? Well, I would like to introduce a new segment. A new segment? Oh, yeah. Uh, to the Now We Know show. Okay. Oh, I, I took a while on this one. <laughs> it's called... Let's get quizzical. Hey, hey. let's get quizzical. 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 I want to get quizzical. quizzical. Let's get into quizzical. Let's yeah. hear your quizzical. mind talk. Mind talk rather than your body. <laughs> There's the theme tune, guys. Yeah, the segment's <laughs> off to a great start. Yeah. Okay, question one. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh, it's a quiz. Oh, it is a quiz. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you didn't realise. Well, you said quizzical. You so surprised. Let's get quizzical. <laughs> yeah, okay. Quiz. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just so, so excited. <laughs> There's three questions. Okay. Oh, it's only three? Uh, yeah, I thought I'd give it a small... I think it wasn't, small one, one. One, of, wasn't one of those cocked up a bit earlier. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> uh, if you've been listening to the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question one. <laughs> Question one, everybody. Sorry. Pay attention. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, three questions. We can nail this. Mm-hmm. True or false? True or false. The Queen is required to have a passport. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let what me think. That? What, what do you reckon? Show today? What, I... what if you reckon? <laughs> yeah, this is a test for the audience because they should have yes. heard this earlier. <laughs> they should have heard this earlier. If don't you... skip through this. Yeah, if you don't start listening to this podcast and think after five minutes you can chop out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you would have learned something earlier. I, I think that it... would it be possibly that the Just Queen that <laughs> is one of the few people, if not the only person, in the whole world. of the world, the planet Earth as it is, mm. flat or spherical, 
that doesn't need a passport because she doesn't so need to give so herself permission. How, how was the question worded? True or false? <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, so what do you reckon? <laughs> false. That she does or doesn't? Wait, what was the, what true, was the question? True or false? The Queen is required to have a passport. False. false. Thank you. Yay! Yay! That took a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> Did we get it? Yes. Yay! Yay! We were a okay. third of the way there. <laughs> question two. Which English king had the longest reign? Which English king? Ooh. I'll be impressed if you get this one. Henry VIII. Henry VIII was around from very being a very fit young man to being a very unfit fat man. Bless him. Uh, uh, but I think it's probably going to be an obscure king. I probably should have put like multiple choice, but I didn't think about it. Uh, <laughs> king Arthur. <laughs> yeah. I'll well. give you a clue. Okay. The name is uh, an heir to the throne currently. You mean William Ooh. the Conqueror? Well, it's one of them. It's one of them. <laughs> one of the heirs to the throne, so we mentioned them earlier. Okay. That's the that's the name. With a number behind it. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. I know. Charles, Charles, Charles. 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 I can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> Don't whisper. <laughs> this is a podcast. It's not going to work. Uh, I don't know, How Jack. many Charleses have there been? Uh, quite a few. I'll give you a clue. It's not Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Charles. Um, William. William. Well, I said William. William. It's not William. It's not William. <laughs> Uh, I'm giving you a lot. George. 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 George the something. The first. Second. Third. Correct. <laughs> <Yay>! George <laughs> the third. We nailed it. Give me a high yeah. five. Yay. Yes. George the third. George he was the third. Uh, on the throne for 59 years and 96 days. There you go. That's very specific. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, is that the second longest, do you think? How long was um, Queen Victoria? Uh, the, what, the original? Uh, Queen Victoria, um, well, yeah, she the was original. <laughs> the original. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, forgive me there. I was thinking of Queen Elizabeth yes, the first, yeah. not Queen Victoria, but Queen Victoria. I mean, to be fair, there have been quite a lot of monarchs. Because yeah. because he's the because George III is the longest reigning king, so the longest yeah. reigning queen is our current queen. Yeah, our current yeah. queen, obviously. The second to that would be Queen Victoria. I don't know, or was it Queen Elizabeth I? Queen Elizabeth the first. I mean, obviously, she uh, came to the throne when she was young. Hmm. And she died when she was... You'll have to look it up. Somebody will have to Google it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if know. anyone knows, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> put down. it in the comments. Uh, question three, final yep. question. Okay, so we didn't get... Uh, oh, well, no, you did, you did get it. You did get George that. You got it first. By finals. simple deduction. Simple deduction. Well, as they say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is it? What does old Sherlock Holmes say? Elementary. Elementary, <laughs> my dear Watson. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's once you've uh, eliminated all the facts or eliminated all the evidence, however obscure it is, whatever's left has to be the truth. Word for word. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, we got there in the end. Question number three. Who was king when the Black Death came to England? Oh, I don't know. Olaf the Hairy? <laughs> is it really that long ago? Uh, was there an Olaf the Hairy? I don't think there was. I don't know. Um, it's interesting, like, in thousands of years' time, there's going to be who was queen when COVID-19 hit oh, the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, uh, it's very similar. Somebody way in the future is going <laughs> to... Yeah made me feel like they're idiots because they can't remember in their, in their, in their VR podcast yeah um, um the Black Death I mean when was that when was the Black Death shall I give you a clue it's, yes it's another it's another third so something. Richard the third nope oh. uh, Henry the third nope <laughs> Charles the third really we should get your shot really should we yeah. <laughs> been really cocky uh. this up <laughs> starts with an E Oh. Edward. Yes. Edward the third. The third. Edward. The third. What year? I can't year? believe you got that. What year? I don't know. I didn't write it. Oh, <laughs> come on, Jack. <laughs> I just got Edward This the is third. question three, part two. What year was the Black Death? Uh, shall I Google or Karen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it was the 1200s. I'll be... Is there a specific uh, kind of a period of time that it was kind of... How long did the Black Death actually go on for? <laughs> the Black Death podcast. Yeah. Uh, it was... 1346. Oh, there you go, 1346. So I was uh, just peaking... a short, short slightly out there. It depends whether it was in England because it says in Europe from 1347 to 1351. Yeah, well, I said the 1200s and it was the 1300s. So I was, I was shooting in the right direction. 14th century. Yeah. <laughs> we know our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just 100 yeah. years out. That's all. But considering <laughs> could, the could centuries, have been yeah. could have been worse. So that was. Yep. Let's get quizzical. Let's get quizzical. Quizzical. I want to get quizzical. Let's get into quizzical. Let me hear your mind talk. <laughs>
And, uh, we'll and have, to, we'll have to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to work on that one. And so uh, that rounds off uh, our Platinum Jubilee yes. special. Um, Yay! So we're all waving our little flags. Yay, celebrating, celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. If you can find the flags. <laughs> Wearing our tiaras, <laughs> <laughs> drinking champagne, eating coronation chicken. And other celebratory foods. Exactly. <laughs> And having our little mini street party <laughs> in the Zachwell Productions Sound dungeon, Studio. dungeon Sound Studio. That's it. Uh, yes. So that's the. I think we're going to get thrown in the dungeon. To be honest with you. <laughs> uh, this obviously, well, it's a very special podcast because I am introducing another segment. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh my segments, goodness! Come on. You're spoiling this, Jack. Uh, this is known as the Now We Know flashback. The Now We Know flashback. Uh, so in this segment. Uh, this is the segment where we read or recap on an old episode and okay. see if there's been any developments uh-huh. in the previous okay, episodes. Because okay, okay. obviously we want you listeners to be mm-hmm. as involved yeah. as we are. Uh, so uh, this comment was from one of my personal favourite episodes, the uh, Japanese snack box episode way back in, mm-hmm. was that episode two I think we yes. did that? Yes, episode two. A couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it's from official Marquez Delamore, who writes, That was a fun podcast. Have you tried out the different flavours of Kit Kat? Ooh, no, so there we go. So I think we've got a future. Well, thank you very much for that uh, yes. that comment. And thank you I much, think you've Marcus. given us a no. Kit Kat tasting idea. Yes, <laughs> episode <laughs> where we have to discover all about Kit Kats because I get told off for the way I eat them. Oh, um, there is a very precise yeah, way of eating. You see, Kit there Kats. seems to be an etiquette to right. eating mm. Kit Kats. Snap! You have to oh, break them well, into well, bars. Uh, maybe we should save that for oh, okay. the podcast. You see, because <laughs> I, get, Kit Kat I, 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 I get to, you know, I, know, I get told, well, is it different for a four-fingered one or a two-fingered one? Uh, yeah, some of them are. Some of them are wrapped in foil. Some of them are, you know. But there is a specific etiquette for eating Kit Kats, which I get my hand slapped over right. not following by well, me by Zach yes. Yes. <laughs> what the hell are you doing he says <laughs> you animal are you animal uh, so we can find out about the etiquette of eating Kit Kats as well as all the different flavours yes. so and thank you very much for your comment Marquez yeah, thank that you very much good suggestion. and everybody else if you've got comment, comments please put them and you'll be featured right. in the Now We Know flashback exactly oh, is that it for the Now We Know flashback that's, that's, yes. uh, that's it Jack yes. okay for so. this week yeah. okay If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. And that's a big platinum jubilee goodbye from Buzz. Goodbye from Jack. And goodbye from Zach. All stand to attention. (laughs) Now we know. Now we know show. Now we know show. God oh, save the oh, oh, now oh, we know. Oh, <laughs> How long we going on for on this? I don't know. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to fade into the actual music <laughs> yeah. at that point. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> <laughs>